Praise the Lord. Hello listeners and viewers. Welcome to tonight's episode on Global Author Platform. We are trusting God to go deeper again as we look into the scriptures. We are still continuing with our strategic Christian thinking, looking at the law of Nehemiah, a wonderful man that rose up in the time of Israel captivity to bring the ray of light. You can follow us on our Facebook at the world with Levin, you can. Our website is www.globalalterplatform.com. The YouTube page is the world with Levin. Our Instagram is at Global Alter Platform. Our email address at info at globalalterplatform.com. You can also reach us on phone on plus 203903. 470-0607. We have podcasts, we have Spotify and Apple Casts. We are on for you. We are just a click away. Join us as we ravel in the word of God. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for tonight again. As we study your word, open our heart and cause us to know the will and the way for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. For those of us that will be following, we we'll see that God's word is potent. God's word has every principle. So when Jesus Christ told Satan at the Mount of Temptation, when Satan told Jesus Christ to turn stones to bread, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. That is, every word of God that continues to proceed out of the mouth of the Lord has life. It has bread in it. And so, as we look at this word of God, every day the secret, the keys to life are dead in the ring. Tonight, we will be looking at dealing with the matters of the heart. Looking at Nehemiah again. Like we studied last week, that when God gives you a vision, People must be attracted to the vision. However, not everyone will believe in your vision. That is not an excuse for failure. But for those who are working with you, there are issues of the heart that must be looked into as a leader. As a leader, there are issues of the heart that must be looked into. There are issues of the heart that if you don't bring men to look, if, if, if you don't expose men to the word of God, you will see crowds following you, but they are not making any internal gain. Today, the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. He says, And there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren the Jews. For dear we that said, We, our sons and our daughters, are many. Therefore we take up corn for them, that we may eat and live. Some also dear we that said, We have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses, that we might buy corn because of the death. There were also that said, We have borrowed money from the king's tributes, and that upon our lands and veiled. Now, sorry, yet now, our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children, and lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be served, and some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and veiled. Nehemiah said verse 6, And I was very angry when I heard their cry and these words. Listeners and viewers, for every vision that is not people-centered, will not go very far. When I mean people-centered, leadership is to relieve men of their hardship. 
relationship, the, the kind of leadership that God wants us to have as believers is that that will relieve men of their sufferings to whichever corner we find ourselves in the program of God. Whichever gate you are called to occupy, whatever level you are called to occupy, when Jesus says, occupy till I come, men are designed, men of the kingdom, you are designed to occupy some places in the kingdom. No one man can occupy every gate, but there is a gate that you are called to occupy. Could be the gate of discipleship, the gate of mentorship, sport evangelism, Whichever way, if you don't look at the life of the men under you, you will have crowd who you feel are drawn to your vision, but they are in pain. And so, in the place we read, we see that the children of Israel, the children of the Jews, were mobilized to work with Nehemiah. However, many of them were in pain. What I call silent noise. There are many people in the church today who are undergoing or going through silent noises known to them and until they cry out help does not come to them Nehemiah would have believed that people were building the gate, the sheep gate, the fish gate, many gate, many wall there were very many that were attracted to the work but several of them were having life pains, bordering distress, body load of debt. Many were in debt, as you see. Now, look at verse 2. He said, Our sons, our daughters, will take up comfort them that we may eat and live, full, daily bread. Now, say they have mortgaged our land, our vineyard, meaning that their economic future was dimmed. Their economic prosperity was in ruin. Their future generation was in captivity because some of them have borrowed money from the king of Pasha's account just to maintain their lands. This was a state of disrepair that the people who were working with Nehemiah were serving. Agreed that they were mobilized to be part of the work, however, they were pains. But what did Nehemiah do? That's our lesson for today. I have it here. Now, why must we do deal with the issues of the heart? The issues of the heart is that if you don't expose the issues of the heart, as we see in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, he says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And Christ said, in, and Christ said Say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. So that when your heart is not attuned with God, mischief is the order of the day. When your heart is not in tune with God, hypocrisy will be the order of the day. When you see a man who is hypocritic in his work, it's because his heart is not aright with God. And may we not be workers whose heart will not be right with God in the name of Jesus. Because when your heart is not attuned with God, you are just working in vain. And God does not want us to work in vain. And that's why this lesson is coming to us tonight. Now, you will now ask yourself the question, at the time that Nehemiah came to Judah, to Jerusalem to build, to restore, what was the spiritual state in Israel? I tell you something, that at this time, the temple had been built. At this time, Ezra has led some of the captives and the city, has been, the temple has been built. However, the heart of this man was not built. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you are in or when you are on any assignment, we are in any project. When we make project, we mean spiritual project. As a leader, you must be concerned about the spiritual state of those that God has placed under you. When I became a campus leader on uh, then back days as an undergraduate, I was made fellowship president. One of the scriptural verses that God gave to me was 
I should be diligent not to lord over God's heritage. In 1 Peter 5, verse 10, he said, Be diligent, be careful not to lord over God's heritage. And that became a referral point. It became a point of reference. It became something that I needed to, to I, I slept with it, I pray with it, I was sticking with it. That the day you become Lord over God's people, the, play, the day you take the place of Lordship in the heart of men, you have become an idol to them. And so, we need to be careful on the state of the mind, the state of mind of those that God has placed around us to work with. That means you should not be carried away with the size of the work. You must be concerned about the state. And that's why Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 says something. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse, Jeremiah 7 verse 5. He said, Toss ye the Lord, cause be the man that trusted in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. So you can see from these scriptures that the condition of your heart is of paramount importance to God. The condition of your heart, how close your heart is before God, is of importance, is of prime importance to God. Now, verse 7 of that scripture, it says, Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out a root by the river, and shall not see when it cometh, but a leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Hallelujah. Now, he said, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked who can know it. I, the Lord, search the heart, and I try the ranks, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. Hallelujah. Now, from this scripture, you will see with me that why was Nehemiah angry? Nehemiah was angry because the heart of the men who were working with him had far departed from the Lord. They confess they are ready to walk, but because of the hardship, what I call silent noise. I know many persons are going through silent noise, and that is why we are saying that it's important that you bring the heart, you bring your heart before God. Christians are committing suicide. Believers, tongue speaking, demon chasing, people that you look up to in the church are going through depression. Many are going through all sorts of anxiety problems. Many of us are being anxious for nothing because the state of our heart does not reflect our confession. Because we are confessing something different from what our heart, our, the allegiance of our heart is tied to idols. Is tied to many gods of this world, and because of that, we are not getting the, 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 the promised peace of God. For such a one hearing me tonight, there is balm in Gilead. Bring your heart before God that there may be healing. Bring your heart before God that there may be deliverance. Bring your heart before God that there may be true liberation, that the Spirit of God may bring peace into you in the name of Jesus. With the arrival of, of Nehemiah, revival broke up. However, the heart of some men were still in the chains of captivity. I want to beg of you today in the name of the Lord. Whatever chain is occupying your heart, you may be involved physically in God's work. You attend every program. It's beautiful. But when your heart, when those chains are not broken off, you are still a captive of Satan. And the word of God is saying today, be free in the name of Jesus. Now, we move forward. With the arrival of Nehemiah, revival to build the wall and the gate that has broken down, men were willing to build, and they were building, but many were hurting. Some of us are hurting from betrayal of trusted allies. 
Some of us are hurting from betrayers from friends. Some of us are hurting from betrayers from our spouses. Some of us are hurting from our past experiences. And because of that, your heart is not fully with God. To such a one tonight, I tell you, there is a bang in Gilead. This is a call. This is a call from the throne of God to submit your heart before God. For the Bible says, I the Lord search the heart. I try the rings, even to give every man according to his ways. You don't jump key when it comes to God. You don't jump God. You, you see, you cannot bypass God's program. Your heart will be trapped. The Bible says that the works of our hands will be tried. And that is the reason why we must be careful. The Bible says, be diligent to keep the state of your heart. Hallelujah. Now, on the dimension of Nehemiah dealing with the heart of this man is that in every crowd of workers, I say this to pastors, I say this to leaders, that in every crowd of workers around you, several are hurting from what you call intra-brethren betrayer. Choristers against ushers. Ushers against security. Even in the workforce. And it's not new. What we are saying today is not new. Why do we know that? That the Bible says the disciples of Jesus Christ at the time were arguing who shall be greatest among them. And they were beefing each other, if I may use that word. They were suspicious of each other. And the, the matter became a topical issue when the mother of James and John came to, to lobby for her children. Mothers are wonderful. A mother will go any extent to protect the destiny of her children. But in this time around, the mother, Mrs. Zebe, they got it wrong. Mrs. Zebede came to Joseph and said, Please, can you grant unto me that my son will sit on your left and that one on your right in the kingdom to come? Christ said, No, it's not the formula. She was zealous, but without the right knowledge. And so we understand that. And so the brethren, the disciples, became angry. They were not discussing who shall be greatest in the kingdom. And Christ has to give them the key and say, If you want to be great, you must be the servant of all. That brings us to the principle that the way up is down. In spiritual matters, the way to climb is to down, is to go down, is to serve. Men that serve the king of kings are never found at the basis of all. You are found at the top. If you want to go to the top in your career, in your profession, I challenge you, serve the Lord. And you will never you will never, you will never be disappointed. Hallelujah. And you must be very, you must understand that betrayal from close persons can be very painful. When the, the closer a person is to you, the, pain, the more painful the heart. And if you must make progress in life, you must speak out. Are you listening to me tonight all over the world? and you are hurting, you are in pain from betrayal, I say you must speak out. Because your silent noise has effect on your heart. You are under chronic stress hormones, you can have ulcer, you can have other things, so you need to understand this. Now, when they cry out, go ahead them. That's why it's important, and again, you also see the same thing happen in the New Testament. Bible says when the disciples were growing in number, they were much, they were become they became murmuring among the Jews that some people's welfare was neglected. So the needs of men with growing work is natural. But how these are handled is a key, is fundamental, is key to the progress of that work. And we can see that Nehemiah did not ignore this complaint. Why? Because the second part of his work in Jerusalem was anchored on the heart of men. The first part of his work was what? The reconstruction of the wall and the gate. Now, he needed to do reconstruction 
of the mind of men because the three layers of challenges that brought him to, to the king to cry for to ask for help was what? The ruins, the ruin people, the people's life were ruined, the wall that was broken down, and the gate that was burned with fire. So he has taken care of the first and second one, that is the gate and the wall. Now he needed to walk on the heart of men, and they needed to be instructed of what God said. He needed to bring them back to the laws of Moses. He needed to bring them back to the teachings, to the instructions, to the precept, to the details of the word of God. Until the heart of a man is exposed to the word of God, nothing grows, nothing is transformed. Praise the name of the Lord. And we see how significant the heart of man is. Nehemiah spent 12 years doing his work. I tell you something, I show you a secret, that the building of the wall of Jerusalem took less than two months. But the, the, but the instruction, the guide, the teaching of the, to bring the heart of men in tune with God took more than 10 years. So, physical building is great, but spiritual building is greater. Physical structures are wonderful, but building the character of men in line with the scripture has a more rewarding uh, outcome. And so we see that we need to understand this principle as Christian leaders, as believers, that physical structure is good. We had in the, uh, one of these history of war that uh, there's a particular city that had a very big war. Is it China? They had a very great war. They, no army could penetrate. But they needed to penetrate. And what happened? They started influencing the men that man the gate. That means if you build physical structure and the heart of men are not instructed with the fear of God, there's a problem. And let me tell you something. That men will go any extent to frustrate and distract you from the vision if your anchor is a weak one, if your anchor is not strong, men will go any extent to frustrate you. For fear, I mean for concern of repetition, when you go to Nehemiah chapter 6 again, that when Tobiah and Samaritan heard it, and they saw that the wall has been built, the Bible says they what? They thought they, they planned assassination. And not only that, it became very terrible when enemies work with insiders to destroy a prophet of God. When enemies now work with insiders to destroy a servant of God. The extent to which the enemy will go can never be quantified. And that's why we says we should be up and doing. We should be vigilant. We should be watchful. Because the devil, the adversary, roamed about as a lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, the Bible says, Sambalat in chapter 6, verse 1 to 5, did something very terrible. And then in verse, in verse 5, the Bible says, Then sent Sambalat a servant unto me in like manner, the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. When they saw Nehemiah not part up with the work, with the destruction, they wrote in five letters. And when that one failed, they now came through prophets. In every move of God, there are people that want to contaminate the move of God. There were people that wanted to distract Nehemiah. And they came through religious undertow. They came through religious cover. So much that they even have a prophetess, prophetess Noda, in their camp. The Bible says they had a prophetess. Now, when you go, you see that it's so funny that men will go any extent. Look at verse 10. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of, of Mehetabel, who was shut up, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple. For they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. 
This man was a false prophet who was recruited by Tobiah and Sabalad to prophesy fear. You see, men want to gain control. Listen to me, leaders of God. For you as a leader, when God gave you a vision, the devil is going to send fear. When the size of the work is not stopping you, they will come to work with your mind. A mind game to cause fear in you, to distract you. But I tell you something. Verse 12. Nehemiah again, man of prayer. He said, And lo, I perceive that God had not sent him. You need the Simon. But that he pronounced this prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Sambalat had hired him. I don't know how many homes have been ruined by false prophecy. Many marriages have been ruined. Many destinies have been wasted because of fake prophets. To you out there that give fake prophecy to control members, you give fake false prophecy to control men, your end is near. The Bible says, God tries the reins of every man. Your work shall be judged. And for some of us who have been victim of mind control by false prophet, by fake prophet with the spirit of fear, I challenge you tonight in the name of Jesus, present your heart as a living sacrifice. Let the word of God breathe inside you. And I tell you, your deliverance will come. For every man that has great assignment, your heart must be attuned with God. The Bible says Nehemiah perceived, meaning that he was not given to frivolities. Nehemiah was not far from God. Many of us, painfully, when God, when God give us a sermon, that same assignment takes us away from God. May your assignment not take you away from God. Nehemiah never allowed the enormity of the work to stop his quiet time. Nehemiah never allowed his, 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 his assignment to stop him from fellowshipping with God. In spite of the work, despite that the gates were being built, he never took his eye from the mark. And what is that mark? To get this dream accomplished. So I want to challenge us tonight that in Dealing with God's work, you must not forget to work on the heart of the men that God has brought around you. God brought them to your way for a particular purpose. And you will see this again in 1 Samuel, when David, Bible said, found himself in Cape Adullam, his brethren came to him, Bible said, men who were distressed. About 400 men who were distressed came to David in King Adullam, and the Bible says, out of them rose up Shemaiah. So it doesn't matter how low you are, you are today. It doesn't matter how dejected you are. It doesn't matter how depressed you are. I want to tell you something that is a bad in Gilead. The Bible says, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Wherever you are tonight, wherever you are hearing my voice, with audio, on video, on the YouTube, whatever channel you are tuning in today, Christ is there with you right now. As you cry to God, say, God, my heart is not clean towards your work. You may be a Christian worker. You may let God, let expose your heart to God's word. And I tell you, there will be deliverance. And for those people out there who are causing confusion, who are causing people, putting fear in the mind of men, using fake prophecy, the Lord is saying, repent for your end is near. The Lord will bless his word into our heart in Jesus' name. There is a balm in Gilead. Open your heart to God and your life will never remain the same again in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the word. We know that the state of our heart matters more to you than our physical activities in the kingdom. Father, purge our heart from every hypocrisy. Teach us your word and let our heart be sanctified that we may not walk with people who are hurt, who are feeling betrayed. Help us to forgive every betrayer that we may walk towards achieving the kingdom target. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
God bless you for listening. God bless you for joining us. Join us again same time next week, every Saturday 9 p.m. for live teachings. However, you can follow us on our social media handles. Our Instagram page is being displayed. Our email address is being displayed. Our phone number is being displayed. And for those of us on the audio platform, you can reach us on, you can view us on Facebook, you can view us on Spotify, on Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Phone number again is plus 234-903-470-0607. Email info at globalauthorplatform.com. Let's hear from you. Subscribe to our channel, share, testify, send us questions, and let's get busy with the Word of God. For the Word of God brings life. Thank you and God bless you. Shalom. Thank you.